Good morning, it's Tim again. Today we're going to go through fossil material like this and we're going to see what's been sieved out of the material and pick through it and show you how to mount it in a wax mount for display. So come with me. So here we have some different material that you maybe have around your house. Hopefully maybe you have something in your garage or a junk room at your house that has a hardware cloth or window screen and you can put a wooden frame around that material or even a metal ring that gives you something easier to hold on to as you shake it back and forth. You can sieve material dry or wet. I usually sieve it with a hose or something to help break down the sediments and let them flow through. Depending on what size material you want to collect on what size sieves you're going to use. This is some unsieved ATCO material from the ATCO layer. It falls between the Austin Formation and the Eagleford group. It's full of black nodules, which are often things like clams, snails, shark teeth. And we're going to look at some of this that's been sieved down already, as well as some other formations, and see all the microfossils that show up in the various formations around DFW. So here we're going to run just a little bit of material through some sieves just to show you how it works. Kind of run the hose back and forth here, get all the material wet, starts to break down. Small material passes through the first layer, leaves the large fossils behind. And I have several layers of sieves here, so we'll keep getting different layers trapped and left behind as we go. Some of these pieces are hard pieces that probably won't break down very well. So I'll just leave those for now. Sometimes you can let things sit outside to weather down some more on their own and then try to run them through again later. So I'm going to take the first layer off. Be careful sometimes when you're doing this if it has shark teeth in it or, or things that are sharp. You can poke your hand and sometimes cut yourself pretty good. Alright. That's our second layer. You can see the material there. And then our third layer is in some window screening. You can use even finer material to sieve the stuff that passes through the window screen if you want to look for really small things like foraminiferins. I'm going to let those sit. You can see the material that's passed through. Pretty fine material, but you can still find fossils in that as well. And we're going to let this dry and look at some other samples that have already been processed. Okay, here you can see my not-so-super high-tech setup. I've got a water bottle with a camera mount taped to it so we can see with this camera down into the eyepiece of the microscope and film these tiny and microscopic fossils that we find. The little boxes on the floor are from the container store as well as the museum wax. You can put a very thin layer in the bottom of the box and that will help your fossils stay put. And let's take a look and see what kinds of things we can find in our samples. This is some Pennsylvania age material, so um, pre-dinosaur material. It's got a lot of cool stuff in it. Anything from little snails and clams. Um, there's foraminifera, this thing that looks like a grain of rice. It is a single-celled organism called a fusilinid. Uh, little pieces of coral, crinoid stems, all kinds of things in here. Sometimes you find little goniotites. And here's some more Pennsylvania age material um, that's even finer material passed through other sieves. So we remove the largest stuff, then we get down to this size material. And then the last sample I'm going to show you of Pennsylvania age material, this stuff is about the size of sand grains. Uh, so you can see it can take a lot of time and patience to pick through these samples and find the really good pieces you're looking for. And you have to be very careful removing them so that they don't fall on the floor or you don't blow on them and blow them off wherever you have them sitting which is why I usually use museum wax to stick them down when I put them in my boxes. The other thing you need to keep in mind is as you are uh, running items through sieves, you need to make sure you've cleaned the sieves really well. 
in between each use um, so that there aren't fossils from different formations stuck inside the mesh of the sieves because that will pollute your sample and give you false ideas of what may uh, lie within a formation. Okay, here we have some Pennsylvania age material. There's quite a few snails here, different kinds, some clams, some brachiopods, which are similar to clams. We have discs from crinoids, which are uh, also called sea lilies. They're a creature that looks like a flower. These are little tiny goniotites. We have some corals, some solitary corals. There's a piece of fish bone, nautiloids. This is the next size material down. Some more snails. More pieces of uh, urchin spines and plates. More crinoid pieces. Corals, some tooth fragments there, some bryzoans there that look kind of like mesh or nets, and some more brachiopods here. And here in our finest material you can see all the little foraminiferans and ostracods and algal fruiting bodies at the top. And this material is the stuff that looks like sand. So you can picture how small these actually are all the little tiny goniotites in there. You also find little pieces of trilobites as well sometimes in here. So earlier, the very first sample we were looking at and sieving down was the Atco layer. Um, this is material from the Atco formation. You've got some denticles from sharks in here, shark teeth, ray teeth, fish teeth, from fish called encodus, pieces of bone where their teeth are mounted, it's a little tiny ammonite, get down into here there's uh, crustacean coprolites which are fossil poop, pieces of crustacean uh, exoskeletons, there's some uh, ray and sawfish teeth in here, Some foraminiferans, fish vertebra. I just wanted to show you guys what some of the finished cases look like. These are what you've been looking at under the microscope there. Oh hey, you're still here? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves today, and I hope this encourages you to go out and find some cool stuff on your own. Maybe sip down some material and find some microfossils. Now's a good time to go look through a microscope while you have some free time at home. Now, be careful while you're out there and make sure when you get home you check out the Perot Museum website and all the cool videos we have on there. Hope you guys had a good time. See you later.